so I'm going to just do a brief kind of summary of, of where, you know, where we've come from and where we are right now. Um, so uh, thank you. Uh, Jazzy, you've been on this pretty much from the beginning. Izzy, thank you. Since you've been with us, you've been on these discussions. Uh, and so where we started maybe at the end of February, so that's four or five months ago now, we've had three rounds of discussions about the idea of how we can uh, marshal the forces of the eco-athletes champions and perhaps other athletes beyond but starting with the Eco Athletes Champions to make our clothes a force for good. Uh, as the, oh, here comes Gary Gilliam. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna just slow down to make sure Gary gets in. Gary. I'm in. All right, welcome. Maybe uh, we, we, we just went through a quick round of introductions. You haven't missed anything. So maybe a quick introduction of yourself to, to the group. Yes, um, hello, my name is Gary Gilliam. I am from the United States. I played in the NFL with the Seattle Seahawks and San Francisco 49ers. Uh, and now I am a commercial real estate developer where we acquire dilapidated properties that convert them into eco villages and the communities that they're in. Happy to be here. And um, I, his story and the, and the Bridge Eco Village, which is his company, um, is doing incredible, is, are, are both incredible. Um, and I will share a link to a podcast that interview I did with Gary a while back that you guys might be interested in. Anyway, um, so where we started this conversation about making our clothes a force for good back at the end of February, uh, we started with uh, another soccer player who Jazz just played against the other day, Lou Barnes, and um, an author, Maxine Bada, who wrote the book Unraveled, The Life and Death of a Garment. And we set up, we, we set up the problem of the apparel industry from an emissions point of view, from a social justice point of view, um, and from a we cannot continue to to interact with clothes in the way we've been doing over these years, because it's, I guess the uh, uh, apparel industry is in the top five or six in terms of greenhouse gas emissions uh, contributions. So then we had two rounds of brainstorming with various champions coming in and some folks from outside on what we could actually do. Um, and this is, by the way, going to be kind of a template for any eco-athletes initiative. We are, you know, for any major initiative, we are not gonna do a top-down approach. We are gonna get the input from the eco-athletes champions to develop a program that works for you. So, and we had one, ses one set of sessions where we did breathing exercises, which then led us to open our minds and came up with some really good ideas, I thought. Anyway, after the couple of rounds, we took notes, we listened, we listened again, and then we developed, and what we are going to present once I stop talking, is the website that Oliver and Scott uh, developed, and I kind of, you know, edited here and there, that will be the hub of the making clothes of a force for good uh, year long initiative that we will then make available to the champions to engage with and to help at first build awareness of the problem amongst your followings, social media and otherwise, and then layer on top of that actions. Um, so we are excited to present the website to you today. Now, this is not a done deal, this website. This website was us taking what you guys gave to us in terms of ideas and thought starters, et cetera, and making our best effort to develop a program based on those comments. However, we want you 
to be able to, by in this discussion, and this is definitely going to be a discussion, to give your opinion on the look, the flow, if it's easy, etc. So this is not the end of the game. This is, we're still in the middle of it. Our idea is to launch uh, the program in about five ish weeks. So we have time to make the changes that come out of this discussion tonight and then a similar one Thursday morning. So I will now stop and hand it over to Scott uh, to take us through what he and uh, Oliver developed. Thank you, Lou. And um, thank you again, all you guys for coming to this call. And really what we want to look at this is, is a toolkit for you all. And so like many toolkits, um, we may add to the toolkit as we go, but the toolkit has, also has to work for you. So I'll walk you through sort of the flow of it and how it's going to work. And before I go any further, I just want to shout out a ton of thanks to Oliver for all of his work actually creating the site. Um, couldn't do it without him. So I don't know if he's able to comment later as he's ca calling in from Singapore. But if you have any comments, Oliver, please feel free. So again, we are really, as Lou talked about, clothing has been sort of historic force of oppression, but yet we have 8 billion people around the world that actually have to wear clothes. So how do we turn that into a force for good? And if we can turn that into a force for good, how much power is 8 billion people all of a sudden using their closets as a force for good? And we also know there is a primary connection between our closets and the climate. So if we're looking at addressing climate change as quickly as possible, we really have to look at commodity items and look at things that everyone touches to get there. And so that's why we're so excited to partner with you all because clothing can be a force for good, even though it historically hasn't. And one way to do that is we have to actually educate people how to do it. And we have to educate them about the impact and we have to make it cool to do the right thing. And Honestly, making it cool to do the right thing has been one of the hardest things we've had to do. And that's where you guys come in. You guys are influencers. You guys are cool. You guys understand. And you can help us shape this message in ways that tie it to the values of your fans and make it part of their lives. And so that's really the goal of this campaign. We have been calling it Making Clothes a Force for Good. One of the edits that we've done as we've talked through the process is we've actually shrunk the hashtag to pound clothes for good because making the clothes a force for good was a bit long. Um, and we absolutely want to revolutionize the apparel industry. Um, we know that the apparel industry ideally wants to do the right thing. All of the people that Patrick and I know that work in the industry. They didn't get an industry to not do the right thing. They got into it to create apparel to better human performance and better human flexibility and satisfy us in different environments. So how do we help them do it? How do we build the consumer demand to help them do it as well? And how do we innovate to do it better? And all those things start with public awareness and consumer demand. So the first step, again, is simply education. And that's really, if you think about it, where we started with all of you is building that presentation with Maxine just to simply make you aware. And by just simply building that awareness, you all wanted to do something anyway. And Jazzy already was doing something with their clothing line prior to this. Um, building awareness is huge just to create that need for action. And also building awareness has, also has to include hope. And that's also where athletes come in. Um, and then generating that demand, as I mentioned. So how we want to do that is we got a ton of great ideas from you all. And really what they kind of boil down to is they address different elements of the life cycle of clothing. We had ideas about how do you actually buy clothing? How do you figure out what is sustainable? What is sustainable? How do you take care of your clothes once you have it? And then what do you do at your clothes with your clothes at the end of life? And so the four hashtags that are going to really be our primary pillars, and we're going to rotate those throughout the year. Swag was a fun concept that really resonated with athletes because you guys all get so much swag, but really swag everyone gets pretty much in life in some way or another. And we wanted to shift that idea to not only excess, but how could we turn it into a pledge of swear to wear all garments? And then also, if you made that pledge, how could you actually 
get a swag to yourself, sort of the street definition of just cool and independence. And you're not really a slave to fast fashion. You have the swag to do what you want and extend the life of your clothes. Buy what you love is addressing that initial part. Wear it again is also the best thing you can possibly do. Um, but also we'll talk about how you care for your clothes so you can continue to wear it and then extend the life issues that end of life and how can we go into some circular solutions. And again, we'll, we'll work with these, they'll rotate amongst the year um, and we'll try to take advantage of larger initiatives that can give us a bigger audience, even more than your guys' combined reach. So think about if it's World Recycling Month, for instance, how can we talk about some end of life solutions that bring some textile information to that conversation? So we'll, we want to take advantage of as many things as we can. Our goal is to educate as many people as possible. So that's part of the strategy. And as you all become aware of different initiatives, especially internationally that we may not be, that we can tag on to, let us know. As I mentioned, it's a toolkit and it's how we're going to build out the campaigns and what we tie them to. So specifically, when we look at campaigns, and if anyone has any questions, please shout out. What we want to do is make it really simple for you. And the idea is that each month we'll start out with a message that you all will launch via a post on your selected social media platform or platforms. With that, we'll actually provide you all some drafts imagery to use. And then also some potential captions that you can personalize so that it best meets your audience. We'll also provide multiple images so that we have images that actually resonate with your audience as well. And so we have athletes that are sailors, for instance. And so they're likely going to be more interested in potentially microplastics or ocean pollution, or there may be ways to bring out ideas using imagery with oceans or water for that audience, as opposed to a different athlete. And so we want to give you guys imagery that actually resonates with your audience. Quick way to look at how we're doing this um, through an infograph that I sadly met on PowerPoint. So sorry for the design. Um, we are going to try to improve it. But basically, again, we're going to have monthly digital content that we'll develop. Um, it's going to be focused on those four rotating pillars. We'll provide that to you all monthly. Um, so we'll update this website monthly and just send you all a link or an email reminder. That way you don't have to wonder where we are, what month or what imagery to use. It will specifically be for that month. Um, you'll then choose the content that most resonates with your audience and customize that also to personalize it for your voice. Um, and then post that on some designated dates. And those dates will be listed in the website. We'll then follow up your posts with additional relevant posts that could be statistics or solutions or other backup information. We'll let you know when those go out. Ideally, you all could like those and share those as well, just so we get the most traction and exposure as possible. And what that's gonna do is turn in a smaller group, us sending messages to a super large group of educated people around the world. And that's really what the overall goal is because once we educate, then we inspire, then we build action. So this first post, what we really wanted to do is introduce the entire program. So ideally with the September launch, the post is really gonna be introducing making clothes a force for good. But we also want to make it personal. Like we want, we know when people see this on your site, they might be, oh, this is kind of different. Why they do this? So ideally, we want you to finish the sentence. Um, and when you look at the site, you can see we have a variety of different images that we've created. And we can definitely create more. Um, but we wanted to show you all just initially some of the opportunity and some of the look and feel. So this is a pretty good example of what you'll see each month. And all you need to do simply is just click the image that you want to use. And you can right click that and save it to your computer. I'm probably talking to the wall. You guys probably do this way more often than me. Um, but this was made for anybody. And then you're able to personalize that, me that message. What we also want to do is we want to measure our impressions and all of the different measurements that can show if we are building that awareness that's going to lead to the action, which will lead to the revolution. Um, and so we want to create a running scoreboard. 
And that scoreboard, we will have information per month, and then we'll also have sort of campaign totals. So you see, for instance, the hashtag close for goods, the primary hashtag for September. I, it will be one of the other four um, for the next month, so we'll be able to add those, and you guys can keep track of how we're reaching, um, how well it's working. And also, we can start to figure out, do we need to change anything? Do we need to try anything? We have we want to utilize the first months of this program to fine tune it as well and learn from each month to make it bigger. So part of that's just evaluating that. Some of that may also include, for us, we can measure those first three areas, um, the likes, comments, and measure it by hashtag. The bottom areas are information that only you all can provide. Um, and we are going to fix the misspelling there, so don't worry about it. This is the draft. Um, but so we will figure out a way maybe to send you out. When we send you out maybe the message of the monthly address, we can also maybe gather that information from the previous. But we want to make it work easy for you as well. So your suggestions on that are more than welcome. And that is basically our website and our toolkit for you. As I mentioned, um, we will change this imagery part each month, and we will also update the scoreboard each month. So expect those two to be different each time you look at it. But, but uh, to be clear, though, Scott, the website is the toolkit, right? The two are the, Absolutely. in other words, uh, right now, at least we don't have, th there will not be a public facing website yet. Correct. That could, we be, may, we that could be version 2.0, uh, especially when we want to do actions. Yeah, especially if when we when we bring out the swear to our all garments pledge, we absolutely will build that out. But we wanted to first concentrate on this toolkit for you all. And then once we have this built out, then our next function will be to create that sort of um, campaign focus site. But as Lou mentioned, the website while it is available, the public could find it if they knew the address. The address is not going to be widely publicized, but it will be forwarded to all of you athletes via a monthly email. Right. It won't be publicized except to the athletes um, until we decide that. And then we would probably have to develop a separate site for the public. Um, Correct. So, um, so what any, you know, any thoughts on all on what are your thoughts on, you know, either the, the actual, um, you know, the four pillars, the social media uh, tiles, and your first post, and kind of what you saw overall? Any, any, any thoughts to start? Um, I can start. Um, so... I mean, Scott, this website looks great. Thank you so much for designing it. Um, I really like how it starts off with kind of the mission and the initiative with um, this campaign. And I like the four pillars as well. Um, I think it's a good way of categorizing it all. Um, I think that as we progress more into the campaign, we could also just um, put little... Um, kind of like instructions. So for example, like um, Lou, I know we were talking about the college task task force like a week ago. Yeah, um, that's, that's yet another task force. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. so if we wanna do like something else um, and get like people from different teams or whatever, for example, like um, doing like a shoe drive or like put donating all your old shoes, um, things like that. If we could make, put something on the, on the toolkit, um, that would make it easy for people from different teams and everything to organize their own um, events or initiatives from that. Uh, we have three, we have three champions who are on each of three different NWSL teams, one of whom is here right now from uh, Angel City FC. We could almost, we could even start a mini NWSL challenge. Well, and I mean, Izzy's idea is so great in that also, even if we're sort of a clearinghouse to, to re-communicate great things that are going on, and we start to build this network of people just following these hashtags to know how to do better, even if we don't initiate them all, if we're just publicizing them, we're building the audience in a great way and also celebrating great acts around the country. So awesome idea. 
and 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 I could see it. Uh, is he on the college side? Um, right now, off the top of my head, we have champions at seven different uh, colleges and universities, and so you all could play against each other. And in those cases, D three, D one, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. In fact, D D three could kick D one's butt. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I liked how you kind of had a little gallery of different images um, to use for the start of the campaign, like the posting. And honestly, I could see that um, being used for even like uh, team accounts too. If like, for example, NYU Soccer wanted to um, participate or whatever, they could, we could take that and put that on the account and then, um, you know, participate in whatever, um, initiatives come after that, like the shoe drive or, um, you know, just helping raise awareness with other platforms because we're all part of a bigger platform or, or teams, you know, it doesn't have to be just um, the athlete too. We could try to get it, get it out to more people. Oh yeah. We want to get it out to your followers who are athletes and accountants and uh, nuclear physicists and students and whatever else they are. Well, I wanted to give you guys a sneak preview. And again, thanks to Oliver for all of these. I can take no credit for them other than just saying great job. Um, <laughs> very minor edits. So here's some some images that we've just created for future elements of the campaign. So you guys can also see how we might follow them up with information or solutions and also how we can hopefully cater to different audiences as well. And these are just kind of an initial grouping. Um, we're gonna create more as we go. And a lot of these are more around some initial awareness. Um, we'll build in some more hopeful ones and also some more different types of solutions like this one as well. I also want to thank Oliver for his unflagging uh, efforts on all of this stuff. Yeah, especially um, since at the time he's been doing this, he's gone from Edmonton to Vancouver to Surabaya to Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> and, any um, uh, any other comments? Uh, you know, kind of general first reaction to what uh, what Scott presented. And Jazzy, especially if you from a brand perspective um, and the audience building perspective, like any ideas you have are always welcome. Um, yeah, I kind of shared similar thoughts as Izzy in terms of like creating kind of the, I guess a template would be a good name for it that we can just kind of plug and chug when we're ready to host events. <laughs> or um, yeah, just like start to implement this stuff out into our communities that we can all just like use and bounce off of. And it just becomes like really easy to share with one another would be awesome. And then I think it would be cool if maybe we had like a, di a directory that we can link to people of like, brands that we already knew were um sustainable and like vintage shops and and stuff like that that were in specific areas that we all represent so it's just like another source mm. um where people like know where they can go to shop sustainably i don't know what that looks like but <laughs> i bet that exists i bet that exists somewhere and, and we could hopefully draft draft on it. That's a great idea. Yeah, and it's a con it's a it's a constant question, and it's what it's probably like the first question every consumer has is like, well, how do I do this better? I still have to wear clothes. Like, what? Who do I buy from? How do I know? How do I check? Great point. And you, um, and you know what? And Scott, just thinking out loud, 
and also about to contradict something I said before, meaning contradicting myself, um, which is, yes, this is internal, a toolkit, this doesn't go out to the world. However, if, if this takes off with our champions, you know, making close up force for good is important to me because, and it gets a lot of response on their social media, it may make sense for us to capture that sooner rather than later and develop a, a site where this stuff would live for the public. Yeah, and I mean, I like what both, both Jazzy and Izzy talked about building community, basically, and how do you build a community on what we're doing? So having Patrick here is great because Patrick's expertise is grassroots and building community as well. And so it's thinking about like, how do we, how do we reach out to these communities that are great audiences? And then also, how do we identify action items that might take advantage of infrastructure that already exists within those audiences? Or how do we actually allow them to do it and strategically? And some of that could be sharing information as sort of a clearinghouse. I think that's something we would we need to think about and figure the best way. But I love the idea of it because the whole idea of this is building community for change. So right. we definitely want to consider how to do it. And the more these communities that are identified that have a natural connection, it just speeds the process. I mean, because if at first, I mean. It, it, if, if this if this is the only site the toolkit is the only thing and then the champions are putting out these really cool posts and they're getting a lot of likes and a lot of oh here's my uh uh here's why it's important to me um that's going to live on instagram or twitter or wherever however um if we build a site you know that can absorb all of that, that becomes, um, that becomes a powerful thing. Yeah, I think, I think we sort of have to have that no matter what. Yeah, so I, I officially contradict myself, which happens. Just uh, questions. Most of my comments are gonna be questions at this point. Sure. Uh, in, in, ter in terms of the hashtag strategy, uh, one one thing that perhaps we, if we haven't considered, or the question is, have we considered um, what makes the hashtags unique and identifiable compared to so these four hashtags? Um, how are how can we make that uh, relatable and connected to the overarching campaign? And so um, one thought, perhaps, um, so swag. That's that's a that's a hashtag that's going to be correlatable to different things right now. Um, buy what you love is probably a little bit more unique. Uh, wear it again, definitely more unique. And extend a life, I think, is also probably going to be more unique. Um, is there a thought on a secondary hashtag that connects all of this back to the the, the primary, the overarching campaign? And is it close for good? So it's that, and then the idea is we would also not. Those would be sort of our hashtags, but when we were tagging on to larger issues, we'd utilize their hashtags as well. So if it's recycling month, we'd do that, or if it's ocean month or to broaden the audience as well. So, but the idea is that we had these and then the overarching one was always the close for good. Okay, great. So then in terms of the hashtag strategy, it's it's a primary and secondary hashtag. There will always be, there should be, all, there should be two. Yeah, at all times, right? Yeah, right. And, and the then, alternate driver, maybe if it's tagging on to another issue. And Patrick, okay. I should t tell you that, and this may not fit here, but eco athletes hashtag that we use all the time is cli hashtag climate comeback. So, Got it. okay, and maybe that okay. doesn't fit here, but I okay. just would be remiss if I didn't mention it. Yeah, I, I think anything that 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 really ties it into an overarching campaign is really what drives the community component. Um, and keeps people engaged, and 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 then potentially taking it from a um, education piece to an action piece. Um, maybe close for good is also the the it, it's not just a call to action, but it is also the 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 thing that identifies action. So it could be um, so and so is making close for good, or or. 
whatever the community is, whether it's a small grass, like a grass, like a soccer club, that's right, uh, or or an individual or a brand. And this is what Jazzy, I think, maybe was mentioning is like who's already doing this, um, and 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 calling that out and saying they're doing their their part in making clothes for good, um, and then challenging the rest uh, to to say how are you making clothes for good, um, and and then giving them the venue to be able to to publish that. Uh, as well, so I just look at the stacking of the of, of the hashtags um, in, in terms of uh, the overarching campaign. And and so would that also so? Let's say it's we'll take Izzy at, uh, and NYU women's soccer. So um, Izzy could come up with an idea, and to, you know this is how how NYU, NYU, uh, NYU women's soccer, blah, 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 closed for good. What do you, how do you do it? You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could, it could be part of the, the tagging strategy or it could just be part Love of the, um, the, cap, the caption strategy. And NYU soccer is, is, is um, um, you know, making, I'm trying to scroll your website like it's, I have control of it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's I, making, I know that, I do that. Yeah, uh, it's making clothes for good. Um, so yeah, just like, how, how did the hashtags really become part of a narrative um, is, is, is one of the things that um, I, I'm sure we'll continue to have conversations on as well. Yep. Awesome. Um, Gary, just want to make sure if, if you have any uh, thoughts to add. Where's he still there? I, I don't know that he's still on. I don't oh, I think he might have. I think he might have dropped off, actually. Um, so to the part where, um, oh yeah, to the part where we were talking. Can you go? Um, Scott down to the uh, scoreboard part. So as, as Scott was saying, um, the first three metrics um, are, you know, we can just grab that, that those will be generated automatically. Um, the bottom three would need to be, we would need an assist from the champions who are participating in this. Um, where you would have to say, provide us with some information, Scott, roughly on a monthly basis? Yeah, I mean, we, we want to make it as painless as possible. So I think we could just do that in a single communication. We let you know about the update and then ask you for your numbers from the last post. Also gives those posts a little bit of time to be shared and other things and we'll get the get accurate numbers, but not be asking you for numbers every week or something that's too crazy. So what we would, so just to uh, repeat that, we would, so let's say month one, let's say that this first thing drop, the first one drops, I'm making it up September 15th. Um, and then the next one, we would drop rough, roughly October 15th. So then October 8th, a week before that, um, we would send a note and say, okay, here's what we've got for you for a week from now content wise, uh, uh, tile wise, and uh, could, you could you forward us this information? Is that, yeah. is that and, and there is no right or wrong answer, whatever's right for you. Does that sound like too much stuff? Just about the right amount of contact? Um, would you want more contact? Is, is, we're concerned we don't want to make it too onerous so you're not going to want to do it we want to find that sweet spot so any thoughts sorry can you break it down again one we have a campaign every month, but then when would you be reaching out? Or you're just saying before the campaign, you would just... No, no, no. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. So each, so we're going to, you know, we're basically just changing the content each month um, with new, with new uh, social media uh, 
I'll call those tiles or, 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 or visuals. Um, and my thinking is that a week before the start of that next month, the launch of, of this next one, we would send an email, here's the next batch. And we would also ask in that very same email um, for in the last, you know, in, in the month that just that is, is about to end, you know, how many accounts did you read, how many, what, what the engagements and the impressions were for you for what you sent out in the first month. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. And so it's all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. And then ideally, Jazzy, when you come back on like later in the week to do your post, then we could have actually posted all the numbers that we got from that email a week earlier. So you kind of can see almost in real time where we're at. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. And then, and, and video definitely can play a part with Instagram and Twitter. And, and I mean, we didn't really discuss TikTok either, but we want to make this relevant on channels that you're on. So any suggestions to, obviously we're giving you guys only static content at this point. So if we have some TikTok ideas, um, if you need assistance from us to do those or what would work on TikTok, we're totally open. Like we, if you're big on it, we want to work with you to figure out something that works on that platform. And something that can build participation and fun, hopeful awareness too, because it's probably a pretty cool platform to do that on maybe. Eco Athletes has not done anything on TikTok and that's mainly been for two reasons. One, I have no idea about it. And two, we have a bandwidth, we have a bandwidth issue overall, but if TikTok is part of the mix, then we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah, if, if you want to drag Lou and I to TikTok, please do. But if you don't, that is also fine. <laughs> Clearly, that is fine. But if also, if, if LinkedIn is a good platform for you as well, um, we're down with LinkedIn. Twitter. We can we can create stuff for all platforms. So let us know. We thought visually to launch it, IG and like Facebook would work. These also work for Facebook as well. Um, and there's they have when we send you those, they'll be sized appropriately for each platform, and also they'll be image quality appropriate for that platform. Any, any other thoughts? Because I, I asked the main questions that I had. Yeah, let me say something real quick. So yeah, I think that um, for now, I think it'd be good to focus on the static content because it's, um, I know we had that little dashboard that you're planning on uh, keeping track of the impressions and engagement. I think that would be easier to keep track of everything if we just focused on like, um, Instagram and um, for starters. And then um, if it got bigger, then we could move on to other platforms. But overall, like, I think it's a great idea to kind of consolidate like the content and then like the ask for like your numbers or whatever into one email um, so that, you know, it's like the athletes are kind of going that email to get what they need to post for next, um, for the next um, month or whatever. And then um, they're putting in their engagements and whatnot. So I think that's like totally fine. Perfect, thanks. And also feel free to urge all your teammates to send out a similar post or like your post or share your post. Like we, we don't wanna limit to you guys. You guys are the champions, but right. you're the champions also of inspiration and influence. So please yeah, do. Yeah, that, that, is, that is the idea that it's like, this is not a, an intramural thing. This is an extramural <laughs> thing. Um, and, um, oh gosh. One of the reasons why, and as uh, you guys know with me, I'm very uh, transparent and try to be as open as possible. One of the reasons why we're doing the scorecard, well, one is to see what our impact is. We also wanna make this sponsorable. And why do we want to make this sponsorable? Well, if we have a sponsor, then we can do a more robust program. Um, and a more robust program then will get more attention and more interaction and becomes more robust, more influence, more impact, 
and it makes our clothes a force for good. There could also be, um, I can imagine a world where in a, in, a, in a sponsored world, there could be financial remuneration for the athletes who participate, but there's no guarantee of that. Um, however, uh, this is all in our calculus. Um, so you guys are at the ground floor of something that could be big. So anyway. Absolutely. And that could include NIL for those who are uh, student athletes. Yeah, we definitely, we know that a big audience we can reach around sustainability are youth sports leagues. And we know that there are people in that space that also could be interested in this, like a Dick Sporting Goods or other people that want events in their stores or would love to have someone like Jazzy talk to parents at the end of a season on what to do with their old soccer jersey and bring them back into the store and pay Jazzy for some of her time. That's valuable. Could be cool. And also Izzy as well. I mean, it's all types of opportunity. We just need to build that awareness and show that there is a demand for it. Um, yeah. Anything else from anybody else? Because we're sort of up against time, actually. Um, we Is Oliver still there? Yes, Oliver is there. Gary came and went. Oh, well. Any, any other thoughts from uh, Patrick, Jazz, Izzy? If not, then we're I'll just add one other quick thing, especially for Izzy and Jazzy, is we know ladies buy 85% of everything, and we know ladies are the, you can't have a social change movement without women leading it. Um, and we need this to really resonate with women and young women. So you see Lou and I are not that, um, neither is Oliver. So we need help with that. So please. at least Oliver has the young part. <laughs> yeah. I'm, but, a, I'm old for two, man. So like Izzy, if you look at all these images and you go, none of these resonate with me or my friends, we need to know before we say these are the images for the month, right? So we would be happy to work with you guys to share more of some of the images we create um, as early as they're created and have you sort of be a focus group for us to the extent that you're open to it. But we definitely want your opinion and we want you to feel proud about what you're posting. And I should tell you guys, I don't know that, um, the eco athletes champions, we are now 84 of 84 eco athletes champions of which 59 are women and 25 are men. So we, and, and we, I guess we are either leading it or we are reflecting the movement towards women's sports, um, or maybe both, but I sure am glad to be part of that. We're honored to be a part of it. And thank you guys for your time tonight. I know you're super busy. I need to go get some highlights of your last game against Lou Jazzy so I can see you guys going against each other for the second half. I, I was texting a joke with Lou about it. And she said that she only laughs when she plays you head to head. So she was hoping that you weren't going to play except for maybe three minutes. Yeah, we can never keep a straight face. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah. <laughs> game so you'll be entertained by the highlights <laughs> she told she told me that she doesn't mark man to man though she says she plays in space i said but isn't it funny how your space and jazz's space are the same yeah it's like striker <laughs> and central defender so she's so she so she laughed <laughs> so, so have you ever scored on her jazzy um yes but the 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 win column is dominated by Lou, so <laughs> I don't know if people even are worth anything at this point. <laughs> Do you guys have another match with them this season? No, that was the last one. Unless uh, unless we see each other in playoffs. Are you coming up to Portland at all before then? Oh no, I think the team went to Portland already. Also, when. When I was out hurt, I think. I think we only have like East Coast games left. So um, are you coming to uh, Gotham? Yes, end of August. Ooh, we we could meet. Yep, I think it's the I think it's August twenty eighth is the game. 
August 28th. So that's like a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think, no, I don't know. I'll figure it out. And then if I, I'm going to, I'll try and get a pa uh, media credential. We'll talk offline. You guys have been great. Awesome. Yeah, next time you're in Portland, Patrick and I will take you out to coffee or tea or whatever for, for breakfast. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, y'all. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks again, Oliver. Hey, Izzy, enjoy uh, St. Martin. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you so pizza. much for, for taking time out of your vacation. What time is it there, by the way? Um, it's There's no time difference. It's just the same time. All right, you get back to your island point. time. What are you talking about? There is no <laughs> yeah, time. island time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but um, Lou, we will chat later. I'll I'll let you know when I'm um free this week. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Hasta la vista, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.